So we know that trauma can have a lot of emotional impacts, but what's not commonly known is that trauma actually changes the chemical balance and structure of your brain. So today we're going to be talking all about what trauma actually is, the nervous system, the physical impact on the brain, and what that looks like in day-to-day -day life. So before we get started, hit that like button and subscribe, and let's get started. So to begin, let's get on the same page and understand what trauma is. Trauma is any experience that impacts your sense of safety and security in the world. And that's a broad definition, but the reason it's broad is because we all interpret trauma very differently. Something that's traumatic to me might not be traumatic to you. Something that's traumatic to you might not be traumatic to your friend. We personally don't get to decide what is or is not traumatic. Our nervous system decides that for us. So it's not about the external event or what happened, it's about how our nervous system interprets that event. So oftentimes people are like, well, that didn't seem like it was traumatic, but I'm still having these symptoms. And the reason is because your nervous system has interpreted that as traumatic, even if cognitively you think that it's fine. So when we talk about the nervous system, I like to think of it as a smoke detector. So if you were at home and you were making a grilled cheese sandwich and you burned it, your smoke detector would go off. And if your house was burning down, your smoke detector would go off. So I like to compare a smoke detector to our amygdala in the brain. So our amygdala lets us know when there is danger. But similarly, the amygdala and the smoke detector in your house can't necessarily tell the difference between real or perceived danger. When the smoke detector in your brain goes off, it is perceiving that there's some sort of danger and enlists one of the four responses. Fight is fight it off. Flight is get out of there. Freeze, that could be playing dead or just not moving. Fawn, the agreeable, people pleasing. What's important to know is you do not choose which response happens for you. Your brain decides that. The reason why it's automatic and you don't get to decide personally which stress response is better for that situation is because the prefrontal cortex turns all the way off. Your prefrontal cortex is helpful for logic and decision making, but when you're in active danger, there is no time to waste. So if a bear were to come through this window right now, I do not have the time to think about, am I strong enough to fight this bear? Am I fast enough to outrun it? Should I play dead? By that time, I would have already been dead. So my brain decides for me and that might be to play dead. That might be to run away. That might be to fight the bear. So you're probably like, how does this relate to trauma? So when you've experienced something that is traumatic or you are experiencing something that's traumatic, that smoke detector is turned all the way on. And oftentimes if that traumatic experience or the traumatic stress continues or it goes unprocessed, that smoke detector will continue to either stay on or be really, really sensitive. So think about how it might be for your body if you're in a constant state of fight, flight, freeze, fawn, or in a constant state of looking out for danger. All of that cortisol, which is the stress chemical, pumping through your body can have such a negative impact on you. So it's not that stress is a bad thing. Stress is actually really important for our lives, but different types of stress can negatively impact us long term. So there's positive stress, tolerable stress, and toxic stress. Positive stress is things like meeting new people, going to a new school, starting a new job, doing a presentation. Positive stress only has mild elevations of your stress hormone. Tolerable stress is more serious but buffered by strong and supportive relationships. And toxic stress is prolonged activation of the stress system. So again, imagine the smoke detector. So if you're making your grilled cheese, you burn it only a little bit, the smoke detector goes on, and then it quickly goes off because the smoke isn't that much. That's something that would be positive. Tolerable stress might be you really burning the grilled cheese and your smoke detector turns on, but it takes a while to turn off because of all of the smoke. Toxic stress might be you burn your grilled cheese and then other things catch on fire. So tolerable stress can be buffered by safe, supportive relationships. If not, it can turn into toxic stress. In the same way that your grilled cheese that's pretty burnt can turn into a larger fire if you ignore it or you don't pay attention to it and other things can catch on fire. So when the smoke detector of your brain or the amygdala is way more active than it needs to be, it can cause a lot of problems. It can cause chronic stress, heightened fear, increased irritation, an inability to calm down or regulate your emotions, insomnia. It makes our amygdala much more sensitive. And then in turn, if our amygdala is turned on all the time, do you remember what's turned off? The prefrontal cortex. And if the prefrontal cortex is turned off a lot of the time, it makes it difficult to learn new information, manage our emotions well, and solve our problems. When we have a lot of trauma or traumatic stress, our amygdala becomes much more sensitive, our prefrontal cortex decreases in function because of lack of use. And the third impact is our hippocampus. So the job of the hippocampus is to store and retrieve our memories and help us differentiate between past and present. If you've been through a lot of trauma or traumatic stress, the hippocampus can decrease in size, which means that you have much more difficulty in understanding which is past or present memories and retrieving those memories at all. 
And when that occurs, we often live in a state of hypervigilance because it's really hard to understand what is past fear versus what is present fear. One of the analogies I like to use for a brain that's been through trauma is that it's better to mistake a stick for a snake than a snake for a stick. When we've been through trauma, oftentimes our baseline is that the world is unsafe, people will hurt me. So we mistake sticks for snakes all the time because it's safer. It's our body and our brain's way of protecting us, but that gets exhausted. So after all that, you might be thinking, okay, well, if I've been through trauma, does that mean it's hopeless, that my brain has changed forever? No. Part of the work of therapy is neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity essentially means the brain's ability to change and form new connections. So we can change our brain. The work of therapy is really processing the traumatic experiences that we've had and creating new connections in the brain so that we can move through life without a state of hypervigilance. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, drop that in the comments as well. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.